my name is Nevas Mumba, former Vice President of the Republic of Zambia and Minister of the Gospel for 44 years. If you don't create your own world, someone else is going to impose their world on you. Africa is in a crisis because Africa seems not to be interested in creating their own positive, successful, aggressive world that they can impose on other worlds. Now, when I talk about world today, I'm going to talk about it in different forms. First of all, within your own mind, how you have been brought up, how you have grown up, you have your own perception that you have created about the world and the global view of how you think the world should run or the world runs. But I'm also going to talk about Africa and the kind of world we have created for ourselves that has only been used by others and has been abused century after century. It's because of the kind of world we have created for ourselves. But there's also another world which our colleagues have created for themselves, which have given themselves a very uh, positive name of first world and decided to give us um, the name of third world because they belong to the world that they created, which has got power and which has got means in which to influence the other worlds so that we become followers of the first world. So today I want to deal with all these worlds and help you, first of all, to get out of this rut in which you have been caught that you cannot think for yourself. You cannot make progress on your own without somebody telling you how to do it and what to do. You cannot really aspire for something greater than you already have because your world does not give you that space. You are a victim of a situation where confidence does not work in your life. Your confidence has been eroded because of the experiences that you've had in the past. And there's nothing you can do and no destination you can go to if you lack confidence. I want to address all of my brothers and sisters across this great continent of Africa. Let's start with the world we create for ourselves and for our families as we grow up. We are burdened with a history of insecurity, a history of unfairness, a history of poverty, and a history of slavery. That history is what surrounds our evolving as a people. We make our decisions based on our weaknesses. We make our decisions based on our sufferings of yesterday. We base our perception of the world on just the circumstances that have been created for us. Africa needs to send the right message to ourselves. We need to, first of all, take all the positives about us and make them our curriculum. Let's not start importing curriculums from all over the world. Let's talk about who we are, the origin of the human race, the origin of civilization, all coming from Africa. That's who we are. In fact, when Moses in the scriptures, you know, was asked by God to deliver Israel, he had to deal with one issue in the backside of the mountain when God appeared to him. God told him, go and deliver my people and let them go. Moses had a problem because he, he was a stammerer. He could not speak well. So he asked God a very straight question. He said, but who should I go tell them sent me? Who are you? Why should they believe you when I tell them that so-and-so told me that you should deliver these people? God's answer is the answer I want to give to every African. God said, I tell them, I am has sent me. I am that I am. You see, in order for you to have an impact in your generation in your life, you have to know who you are. You have to know that you are the I am of yourself. There's nobody else like you. There will never be anybody else like you. There's only one of you. And only you can achieve that for which you were created to achieve. So when you ask who are you, just tell them I am. In other words, in my turf, I can't fail. I may struggle and stumble along the way, but I will not fail because I'm created to succeed in what I am. I am, I am, I am. And once you understand that your confidence levels grow, which is one greatest deficit on the African continent, we have a deficit of confidence. And our friends in the first world, they may not have the resources we have, 
They may not have the gold we have. They may not have the diamonds we have. They may not have the copper that we have. But they do have a high level of investment in confidence. That when he's speaking, he sounds like he's the one who has got all these natural resources. And we look like we're the ones who don't and want him to help us with these natural resources. It's all about confidence. I call Africa to a life of confidence. Confidence in your speech. Confidence in your walk. Confidence in your dress. Confidence in what you eat. Confidence in the fact that you are created in the image of God with equal rights to anybody else. It is important. That's the world you create. The way you present yourself to another person or to another people group is the kind of world you're going to be served with. But let's come to the personal world. What makes your personal world? What makes your personal world is your surrounding, how you grew up your parents from home, how they nurtured you, things they exposed you to, the kind of food you ate, the kind of friends you had, the kind of messages messages you had from your parents and your colleagues in that community. That's what creates you. The kind of books you read, the school you went to, and the kind of movies you watch, those things form who you are and create a worldview that you use. I don't mind which worldview you get for yourself. Only don't get the negative worldview about yourself. That's all I'm fighting for today. Get any worldview, depending on where you've grown up from, depending on the friends that you've had. But whatever worldview you get, don't let it touch your confidence levels. Because the moment you have a deficit in confidence, you have a deficit in progress, and you have a deficit in being a success. And that's the challenge that Africa faces. But Africa cannot become what we want her to become. Until you as an individual transition on yourself from being a failure of yesterday to a success of today and tomorrow. The fact that you come from a very negative and dark background does not make it, does not make it to sound like the future is going to be the same. The yesterday is gone and tomorrow is all that you have. And we're going to make the best of, of tomorrow. So today I want to talk about Africa and its future. We are overwhelmed by the analysts who tell us about how Africa is, the missed opportunities for Africa. Why are we poor? And yet we have all these natural resources. Oh, our government's running this way because we have analyzed our problems as Africa over and over and over again and beaten ourselves on the heads and rightly so because we are really not doing what we should be doing as a continent. We have sold our birthright. To some other people. We have sold our birthright to those who claim to have what it takes. Time has come to get our birthright back. But I want you to understand that yes, we have identified our problems, but time has come now for a new breed of leaders that does not just bemoan our conditions, that does not only articulately explain how difficult the situation of Africa is, but we need a new breed of leaders. That new breed of leaders must now start to say, now we understand our mess, we understand where we've blown it, we understand how we have let our resources go away, now it is time to practically fix Africa. Somebody must rise and stop mourning and crying about the status of Africa. Another group now that that has been analyzed, it's like a doctor who analyzes your problem and tells you how much cancer you have, which stage the cancer has gone, the moment you get there, it is important to get to a surgeon that can get to work and fix what's broken. This is where we are, some of us. We are at a place where we must fix what is broken. And we are standing right there to create a new world for ourselves. A world that is assured of success. A world that is sure about who we are. A world that knows that the resources that we enjoy are our own resources. So... Taking other people's worlds and placing them on Africa, and that Africa has to dance to what the rest of the world says, and yet it's the most resourced continent in the world. Something is wrong. And yet it's the origin of all civilization. Something is wrong. And yet it's the source of human life. Something is wrong. So I think that there should be some new breed of leaders on the continent of Africa that change this concept. Not too long ago, coronavirus was discovered in China. It moved its way to Europe, to Spain, 
and hundreds of thousands of people lost their lives before our eyes on the media. It spread right across Europe. As we speak today, America alone, up to this day, has had 51 million cases, lost almost 806,000 lives. Europe is the same. When it comes to Africa, the continent that has its own way of doing things, we have only recorded 6.7 million cases with only 153,000 deaths in the whole continent. Meaning, at the end of the day, we are the least affected. But because of the way the world is skewed, they try to create an impression that the most dangerous carrying this virus are the Africans, to the extent that we have to be blocked from going into Europe, we have to be blocked from going into the United States, so that they keep their people safe from us with this infection. The opposite is true. But when you are not the one who creates the world that you live in, you're going to be getting the bad end of the stick each time. And I am speaking to Africa today, not just to highlight our problems, but to demand leadership from all our presidents across this continent. If, for instance, when this virus came, we decided since we were not, we were hardly affected, as it can be seen up to this day, we have the least numbers. The right thing would have been for us to close our borders against those so that they don't come and bring that virus here. But now the impression is that the virus is manufactured in South Africa and in Africa, and it must be contained within Africa so that the Africans are the only ones who deal with it. They don't have vaccines, they don't have this, and so we close them in. The point I'm trying to make is that let's provide our own leadership, even in the, in the pandemic. Let's have our own sessions. What does the U Africa Union exist for? But to sit down and say, this is what the world is saying. This is what the world is offering, but what are we saying? What are we putting on the table? This virus seems to really be struggling to find its way in Africa. And yet we are in a panic that is not our panic, but the panic that belongs to somebody else because we dance to other people's worlds. We respond to other people's worlds. We embrace other people's worlds and we employ other people's worlds in what we do. We need to create our own world, which is a world of leadership knowing that we are, Africa is the next world system. Africa is where it's gonna be happening next. And we need to own that and be confident about it. Some of us, our biggest problem is that we are so scared that if America is closed, Europe is closed, and we don't go to those countries, then we are going to really feel bad about that exclusion. Absolutely not. Time has come for you to love your own continent. Even if they closed you in here for the next 10 years or 20 years, it's your continent. Make it work. Let it work so that you can enjoy your stay in the God-given continent and God-given country. I say to Africa today, if you want to create your own world, let's recreate our curriculum that we teach our children, that let's teach them about who we are, where we are from, what we are able to do, the discoveries that have been made by us ourselves, and things we have done in the past successfully. And let us make ourselves a people who are confident in who we are and what we can become. But it all starts with you as an individual. All the negativity you have about your, yourself, about your country, and about your continent, only you can clean it up. And we've come to let you know, Africa is not the way you have been told it is. You are not the way you have been told you are. And we need if to integrate in the rest of the global community only when we can put something on the table for the world to appreciate from us as we appreciate certain aspects from them. So today, as we talk about creating a new world, we have an opportunity in this great meeting to start to change our thinking that once your mental world changes and you become courageous, you become confident, you know who you are, you become unstoppable. And therefore, this thing that I'm discussing is the description of the new Africa. I thank you and may God bless our great continent.